Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to another exciting chapter in the labyrinth of ancient philosophy. If you thought our dive into Socrates was a trip, brace yourselves because you've seen nothing yet. Today, we're delving into the life of a character even more eccentric, even more provocative and unquestionably hilarious. His name was Diogenes of Sinope originating from the pages of Diogenes Laertius's significant work, Lives and Opinions of Eminent Philosophers, which chronicles the lives and teachings of Greek philosophers. Our story today unravels the narrative of this unforgettable philosopher in a modernized style. Diogenes was a blend of wit, word plays, and some deep stuff. As we walk through his fascinating biography, you might not get all his jokes. I mean, there's a lot of backstory to unpack. However, I've done my best to bring clarity and taken the liberty to sprinkle a few personal comments along the way. And yes, Diogenes was quite a character, captivating and funny, which is probably why he was well liked by many. Personally, I'm still not sure what to make of him, but come along on this ride and perhaps together we can decode the enigma that is Diogenes. Life of Diogenes by Diogenes Laertius. Diogenes was originally from Sinope, and his dad, Hysesius, was a money changer. According to Diocles, Diogenes had to skip town because his father, who ran the city's bank, got caught counterfeiting. But Eubulides, in his writings on Diogenes, says it was actually Diogenes himself who was tinkering with the coins, leading to both him and his father getting kicked out. Diogenes even admitted to this in his own work, Pordalus. Others argue that Diogenes was an official in charge of the mint. They say he was talked into messing with the money by the workers there. Then he supposedly went to the famous oracle at Delphi or Delos, asking the god Apollo if he should go ahead with what people were pressuring him to do. Misinterpreting Apollo's approval, Diogenes believed he had the green light to mess with the money. However, some say he got caught and was expelled from the city, while others suggest he saw trouble coming and fled. There's also another version that Diogenes messed with the cash his father had given him, which got his dad thrown in jail where he eventually died. Meanwhile, Diogenes made a break for it, headed to Delphi, and asked the oracle not about messing with the money, but about how to become famous. This led to him receiving the cryptic oracle message we've been talking about. When Diogenes arrived in Athens, he decided to hang out with Antisthenes, who wasn't exactly welcoming, but Diogenes was stubborn and insisted on sticking around. Even when Antisthenes threatened him with a stick, Diogenes just put his head under it and said, go ahead and hit me, but no stick is going to make me leave as long as you keep talking. From then on, Diogenes was a part of Antisthenes' crew. Being an outcast, he naturally started living simply. According to Theophrastus, in his book, Megaric Philosopher, Diogenes once saw a mouse running around without a care, not looking for a cozy bed or hiding in the dark, and not even bothering about the little luxuries that a mouse might want. This sight helped Diogenes deal with his own poverty. He was the first guy, as some people claim, who started wearing his cloak folded for warmth and slept in it, who carried his meals around in a bag, and who would just make himself at home wherever he was, whether that was eating, sleeping, or just hanging out. Pointing to the colonnade of Jupiter and the public magazine, he joked that the Athenians had built him housing. When he got sick, he started using a stick to get around. After that, he always had it with him when he was out of the city, along with his bag, as told by Olympiodorus, a leading Athenian, and confirmed by orator Polyuctus and Lysanias. Diogenes once asked someone to find a small house for him, but when they were slow in doing it, he made a barrel he found in the temple of Sibyl, his home, according to his own letters. In summer, he'd roll around in the hot sand, and in winter, he'd hug statues covered in snow, always pushing himself to withstand any condition. Diogenes was known for being extremely blunt, and he wasn't shy about showing his disdain for others. He referred to Euclid's school as a school of bitterness, and called Plato's discussions a disguise. He said the Dionysian games were just a big spectacle for idiots, and referred to political leaders as the puppets of the masses. He'd often say, when I see pilots, doctors, and philosophers, I think humans are the smartest animals, but when I see dream interpreters, fortune tellers, and people obsessed with glory or wealth, I'm sure there's no creature dumber than a human. He also believed that a person should have more reasons than excuses for their actions. Once he saw Plato at a lavish feast, munching on some olives. Diogenes asked, why did you go all the way to Sicily for a feast like this when you're just eating olives? Plato responded, I ate a lot of olives in Sicily, to which Diogenes quipped, then why did you need to go to Syracuse? Didn't they have olives in Attica? Once, Plato had invited friends from Dionysius to a banquet, and Diogenes walked all over his plush carpet, saying, This is how I crush Plato's ego. To this, Plato responded, You're being pretty arrogant yourself, Diogenes, thinking you're not arrogant. 
On another occasion, Diogenes asked Plato for some wine and dried figs, to which Plato responded by sending him a whole jar of figs. Diogenes remarked, If someone asked you what's 2 plus 2, would you answer 20? You don't give based on what's asked, nor do you answer the question asked. When asked if he saw any virtuous men in Greece, he replied, No men, but I've seen good boys in Sparta. Once, when people didn't show up to hear him speak, he started whistling. When a crowd gathered, he criticized them for running to listen to nonsense, but being too lazy to care about important stuff. Diogenes had a knack for quick-witted and often biting remarks about different professions, whether they were grammarians, musicians, mathematicians, orators, or those who were rich. He also expressed surprise at slaves who watched their masters overeat but didn't help themselves to the food. He often praised people who planned to do something but didn't follow through, like marrying, going on a journey, getting into politics, or raising children. He famously said, You should always give a hand to a friend, but don't close your fingers. In other words, when you offer friendship to someone, it should be done wholeheartedly and unconditionally, without any expectation of receiving something in return. When Diogenes was captured and sold as a slave, he was asked what he could do. He replied, I can manage people. He instructed the auctioneer to announce, if anyone wants to buy a boss, there's one available here. When told not to sit down, he retorted, fish are sold no matter where they are. He often expressed his surprise that people would thoroughly check out a dish or jar before buying it, but judge a man based purely on appearance. When he was purchased by Xeniades, Diogenes told him that Xeniades should obey him, even though he was his slave, as people obey doctors or pilots regardless of their status. Eubulus writes in his piece, The Sale of Diogenes, that Diogenes played a key role in the education of Xeniades' children. Beyond their standard lessons, he taught them practical skills like horse riding, archery, and throwing a sling or dart. He didn't believe in intense athletic training, instead focusing on fitness that would improve their complexion and general well-being. Diogenes helped the kids to memorize meaningful lines from both poetry and prose, including some of his own words. He taught them how to remember things in a concise way to boost their memory skills. At home, he encouraged them to be self-reliant, to be satisfied with simple meals and water. He got them used to a minimalist lifestyle, having short hair, no unnecessary accessories, going barefoot and dressing simply. He taught them to remain quiet and focused, avoiding distractions as they moved around. Diogenes also took the kids out hunting. They deeply respected him and praised him to their parents, demonstrating the profound influence he had on their lives. The same writer, Eubulus, asserts that Diogenes lived out his final years in the home of Xeniades, who had his sons bury him upon his passing. Once, while still alive, Xeniades asked him how he'd like to be buried, and Diogenes quipped, on my face. When questioned why, he explained, because in a little while, everything will be turned upside down. A prediction about the rising power of the Macedonians. One time, when a man showed him around a lavish home and warned him not to spit, Diogenes, after a light cough, spat in his face, quipping that he couldn't find a more suitable spot. Some say this tale is about Aristippus, though. Once Diogenes shouted, Hey, men! As a crowd gathered, he shooed them away with his stick, retorting, I called for men, not trash. This story is from Hecaton's collection of anecdotes. It's said that Alexander the Great claimed if he weren't himself, he would have wanted to be Diogenes. Diogenes referred to the truly disabled not as those who were mute or blind, but those without a pouch or bag. One time he showed up to a gathering of young men with half his beard shaved off, as Metrocles recounts in his collection of anecdotes leading to the men beating him. Diogenes responded by writing their names on a whiteboard, wearing it around his neck to publicize their shameful act. He compared himself to a hunting dog, relentlessly tracking those who receive praise, though none who praised them dared join him in his hunt. A man boasted to him about winning at the Pythian Games, to which Diogenes retorted, I defeat men, you only defeat slaves. When people advised him to take it easy in his old age, he replied, why so? If I had run a long race, should I stop just before the finish line or push on? Once, after being invited to a feast, he refused, saying that no one had thanked him for attending the day before. He often walked barefoot in the snow and attempted other extraordinary feats. On one occasion, he even tried eating raw meat but couldn't stomach it. He once ran into the renowned speaker, Demosthenes, at an inn, and as the orator tried to sneak away, he quipped, You will now be ever so much more in an inn. When people wanted to see Demosthenes, Diogenes extended his middle finger and said, This is the great demagogue of the Athenian people.
Just a side note here, the term for in, Capellian, was also used metaphorically to mean brothel. So when Demosthenes was trying to sneak away from the inn to avoid being seen with Diogenes, the cynic philosopher made a joke that now Demosthenes would be even more in an inn, implying that he would be further in disgrace or scandal. It's a kind of sarcastic comment on Demosthenes' attempt to preserve his dignity. To teach a lesson to man who dropped a loaf of bread and felt embarrassed to pick it up, Diogenes tied a string around a bottle's neck and dragged it through Ceramicus. And another side note, in this anecdote, Diogenes is challenging societal norms and expectations about what is considered embarrassing or beneath one's dignity. He said he mirrored chorus teachers, speaking loudly so others could follow the proper pitch. He claimed most people were a mere finger's breadth away from madness. Extend the middle finger, he said, and you seem crazy. Extend your forefinger and you don't. He observed how great value and worthlessness could switch places. A statue might sell for 3,000 drachmas while a bushel of meal only fetched two obols. When Xenides bought Diogenes, he expected him to follow orders like a regular slave. He told Diogenes, come, do what you are ordered to. To this, Xenides added a cryptic remark stating, the sacred river flows backward to its source. This remark was a metaphorical comment on their unusual circumstance. A free-thinking philosopher like Diogenes, now owned as a slave, was akin to a river flowing backward against its natural course. In response, Diogenes retorted, Imagine if you were ill and hired a doctor. Would you refuse to follow his advice, telling him the sacred river flows backward to its source? In this sharp counter, Diogenes implied that despite being bought as a slave, he still possessed wisdom and knowledge akin to a skilled physician. Just as you wouldn't challenge a doctor's advice because you've paid for his service, you shouldn't mindlessly challenge the wisdom of a philosopher, even if he is in a servile position. Once a guy approached Diogenes, wanting to become his philosophy student, to test him, Diogenes gave him a saperda to carry and follow him around. But the guy got embarrassed, tossed the beetle, and ditched the whole idea. When Diogenes bumped into him later, he joked, our friendship was destroyed by a beetle. Another similar story comes from Diocles, who recalls someone asking Diogenes for a task. Diogenes handed him some cheap cheese to carry, but the guy refused. So Diogenes laughed and said, our friendship's been cancelled over some chump change cheese. Diogenes was always seeking ways to simplify his life. One day he saw a kid drinking water using his hands. This made Diogenes feel his drinking cup was unnecessary. He declared, that kid just schooled me in simplicity and tossed his cup. He did the same with his spoon after he saw a kid scoop up lentils with a piece of bread when his bowl broke. He had this belief that everything belongs to the gods and the wise, as friends of the gods share in everything. Therefore, he believed everything belongs to the wise. On another occasion, he saw a woman prostrating before the gods in a rather inappropriate pose. To snap her out of her superstitious behavior, Diogenes approached her and asked, Don't you feel awkward being indecent when a god could be right behind you? After all, gods are everywhere. He had this unique way of helping people understand respect for the divine. He dedicated a man to the god of healing, Aesculapius, to go around smacking anyone who was prostrating in a way that disrespected the gods. Diogenes often joked that he embodied the tragic curse because he was without a home, without a state, cast away in sorrow, far from the land he held so dear, he wanders in the morrow, scrounging up just what he can to simply live another day. Diogenes was known to speak his mind with wit and unexpected wisdom. For instance, once when he was soaking up the sun, the mighty Alexander the Great stood beside him and offered to grant any favor he wanted. Diogenes simply replied, please just stop blocking my sunlight. On another occasion, someone was droning on, reading a long passage. When the speaker finally finished and showed the end of the book, Diogenes quipped, breathe easy folks, I see dry land. He had a knack for putting abstract concepts into tangible terms. When a guy tried to logically prove to him that he had horns, Diogenes simply touched his forehead and retorted, well, I don't see any. Similarly, when someone was arguing there was no such thing as motion, Diogenes stood up and walked off. Once someone was rambling about the stars and meteor showers, Diogenes deadpanned, how many days has it been since you came back from space? There was this shady eunuch who had written on his house, let no evil thing enter. Diogenes cheekily asked, so where's the owner of the house going to stay? After smearing perfume on his feet, he remarked that the scent from his head ascends to the heavens, but from his feet, it only reaches his nose. 
when the Athenians tried to convince him to be initiated into the Eleusinian mysteries, promising the best seats in the afterlife, he shot back, How absurd if great heroes like Agesilaus and Epaminondas end up in the mud while some nobodies who've been initiated party it up in paradise. Seeing some mice scurry up to his table, he joked, See, even Diogenes has his groupies. One time, as he was leaving a bath, someone asked if many men were bathing. He replied, nope. But when a crowd poured out, he admitted, okay, yeah, there were a lot. And when Plato labeled him a dog, he shot back, absolutely, because I've returned to those who sold me. When Plato defined a human as a two-footed, featherless creature, Diogenes never won to miss an opportunity for sarcasm, plucked a chicken and brought it to Plato's school, saying, behold, Plato's human. As a result, Plato had to revise his definition to include with broad, flat nails. Once, someone asked Diogenes, when's the best time to eat dinner? He quipped, if you're rich, whenever you want. If you're poor, whenever you can. While in Megara, he saw sheep all decked out in skins while children ran around naked. His remark, better to be a sheep than a child in Megara. A man once hit him with a beam and then said, you better watch out. Diogenes replied, what, are you going to hit me again? He often said that the demagogues were nothing more than public servants, and that fame was fleeting, like garlands that wither. In a symbolic gesture, he once lit a lantern in broad daylight, claiming he was looking for a man. Another time, he stood under a running fountain, evoking pity from the bystanders. Plato, who was there, told them, if you really want to pity him, just leave. He's just after attention. After being punched by someone, he joked, Good heavens, I must have been wearing an invisible helmet. When Midias punched him and said, his 3,000 drachmas worth, not one to let things slide, Diogenes the very next day used a boxer's glove to give Midias a taste of his own medicine, saying, here's your 3,000 drachmas back. When asked by Lysias, the drug seller, if he believed in the gods, he said, how can I not when I see you and realize they must hate someone? Once he saw a man trying to cleanse himself through a ritual bath and he commented, oh poor man, don't you realize that just as you can't wash away grammar mistakes with water, you can't erase life's missteps in the same way. Diogenes often criticized people's short-sightedness. They blamed their misfortune on the gods while asking for superficial pleasures rather than what's truly good. And those scared of their dreams, he reminded them to pay more attention to their waking deeds, not their sleeping visions. At the Olympic Games, when the herald announced, Dioxippus is the conqueror of men, Diogenes corrected him, no, he's the conqueror of slaves. I'm the conqueror of men. Despite his peculiarities, the Athenians had a soft spot for Diogenes. Once, when a young lad vandalized his tub, the townspeople disciplined the boy and replaced Diogenes' makeshift home. Dionysius the Stoic recounts that after the Battle of Chaeronea, Diogenes was captured and brought before Philip II of Macedon. When asked his identity, Diogenes responded, a spy on your unquenchable thirst for more. Impressed by his boldness, Philip let him go. One time, when Alexander the Great sent a message to Antipater in Athens through a man named Athlios, Diogenes, who was present, quipped, an ungracious son sends an ungracious message through an ungracious messenger. When Perdiccas threatened to kill Diogenes unless he came to him, Diogenes retorted, that's not surprising, even a beetle or a tarantula would do the same. He argued that the real threat would be if Perdiccas said he could happily do without Diogenes' company. He frequently argued that the gods had given humans all they needed to live comfortably, but people made life complicated by desiring luxuries like sweets and perfumes. Observing a man who had a servant put his shoes on for him, Diogenes said, you won't be truly content until he wipes your nose for you, and that will happen when you can't use your own hands. Once he saw temple officials arresting a man for stealing a bowl. Diogenes commented, the big thieves are arresting the small thief. Another time, he saw a boy throwing stones at a wooden post and said, good job, you'll hit your target. When a group of boys approached him, afraid he might bite them, he reassured them, don't worry boys, a dog doesn't eat beetroot, meaning he wouldn't hurt those who aren't a threat to him. To someone who was proud of wearing a lion's skin, Diogenes remarked, stop disgracing the symbols of bravery. And when someone praised the good fortune of Callisthenes for being part of Alexander's entourage, Diogenes replied, it's not good fortune. He eats breakfast and dinner only when Alexander decides to. Diogenes, when he found himself strapped for cash, would tell his friends he wasn't asking for handouts, but just collecting what he was owed. On one occasion, he behaved rather inappropriately in the town square and made a wry comment wishing that filling an empty stomach was as easy as satisfying lust by simply rubbing one's belly.
He once spotted a young man getting ready to rub shoulders with some high-profile personalities at a dinner. Unimpressed, Diogenes dragged the guy away, delivered him back to his buddies, and told them to keep a tight leash on him. When approached by a flashily dressed youngster with a question, he wouldn't give an answer until the youth confirmed whether he was a guy or a gal. There was a young lad playing a popular game in the public baths. Diogenes' wisdom to him was, the better you are at the game, the worse off you are. At a feast, some of the guests decided to treat him like a dog, throwing bones his way. But Diogenes wasn't the type to take it lying down. In true canine fashion, he peed on them. Moving on, he had a unique term for people who loved to hear themselves talk, calling them thrice human, implying they were three times as miserable as everyone else. An uneducated yet wealthy person would get labeled as a sheep with golden fleece. When he saw a for sale sign on a pleasure seeker's house, he couldn't resist a jab. I knew that after such overindulgence, you'd end up throwing up the owner. To a young man who was moaning about getting too much attention, his advice was simply, stop being such an attention whore. One time he came across a public bathhouse that was grimy and couldn't resist commenting, where are people supposed to clean themselves after they've bathed here? He had an interesting take on a large musician that everyone else criticized. When asked why he didn't join in, he said, despite his size, the man chooses to make music, not to turn into a thug.